Do you know, by the way, I wrote an article for Sports Illustrated. It's up right now on my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez. Results of full gear and the story of old hanger. And yes, I couldn't help myself. I had to refer to him as old hanger in the article. This show is great. Dave, I think he said there were eight. I don't know if he said eight. I think he said eight. Four-star matches are above <laughs> out of ten. I had six. But, you know, the thing is, I noted in my article for Sports Illustrated, the thing with this show is every match is is different. And, you know, what's funny is when I went to Dave's to watch the show, it was a full house. There were like 15 people watching the pay-per-view. And you'll never know what happened. You know, you know what happens when you have 15 people watching a pay-per-view? Everyone thinks everything is either good or bad based on their own opinion. Like, you know, the the Young Bucks match. I mean, there's people that think that was a five-star match. There were also people there at the party who were like, this is way too much stuff. I mean, way too many things. It burns me out as a viewer. Everybody has a different opinion about what they like or don't like in their wrestling. And that's going to happen with AEW because, unlike WWE, and I'm not saying this is a negative, it is just what it is, Vince likes one style of wrestling, and everybody needs to work that style. And if you don't work the style, he don't he doesn't, he doesn't get it, he doesn't like it, and he doesn't push you or do anything with you, for the most part. There, there are rare exceptions. But MJF and Darby, fabulous wrestling match with a pure baby face and a pure heel. No questions. Lucha Brothers and FTR, way better than the first match they had. You had Lucha Libre, you had... Uh, old school pro wrestling style workers in FTR melding everything together into this match. Danielson and Miro, two former WWE guys, having a match they could never have in WWE, but it was a great match. Christian and Jurassic Express uh, versus the Young Bucks and uh, Adam Cole. Just, they went out there trying to have a five star crazy match. Maybe you thought it was, maybe you thought it wasn't, but that was the goal, and it was unlike anything else we had seen thus far. Cody Rhodes and Pac versus Malachi Black and Andrade. They had the feuding partners gimmick here, which, like, that's all we see in WWE, so it's irritating. In AEW, virtually all the teams actually like each other. And so it's something different when you have teams that don't like each other. And obviously the reason here is we're likely leading to a four-away with these individuals, I would think. Britt Baker and Ty Conti was your women's match. I could talk a lot about that match. CM Punk and Eddie Kingston was a fight. They just went out there and they fought. We had the inner, we had pro wrestling versus MMA in the inner circle versus the men of the year and American top team. And they, they didn't idiot proof it. I mean, they went out there and they had a match with these MMA fighters. And luckily, Dan Lambert and Andre Arlovsky didn't do a lot. But man, Junior Dos Santos did, and they took out they took every trick in the book to try to make this a, a great match. And while you can't necessarily say it was a great match, it was way better than I expected. And they had a really, really nice finish to celebrate Eddie Guerrero. Adam Page and Kenny Omega in the main event. Just a classic old school world championship match. Played off a story from uh, literally over two years ago. Further, if you go back to the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks always seconding Kenny Omega to his big match at the Tokyo Dome. You literally could go back like five years if you wanted to for this story. But old Hanger won. Uh, the Young Bucks were there at ringside like they weren't two years ago for his first shot. They did not interfere. In fact, they gave him the nod to finish the job. There's many years left of this storyline. But this was the ending of the first act of this storyline. I thought the show was great. What did you think? Oh, I thought it was fantastic. And I can't believe that uh, the people that saw it, anybody would have any other thing to say besides it was fantastic. And, you know, with all out coming right before this, we're in, and new Japan started to change this where it's hard to now compare these pay-per-views of today with the past. You know, my default switch being old was always like 89 great American bash. You can't even compare these cards anymore with the type of athletes and where the business has gone. You just have to take like this newer era and you can compare these with the New Japan Tokyo Do Dome shows and things like that. I mean, I thought it was outstanding from pillar to post. And even the stuff that was not great from bell to bell all had a purpose and a story and a place to go. So it was a win, I thought, all the way across the board. They gave people what they wanted at the end with Hangman Page. 
Cage standing tall with the title, and you got some intrigue in there with his interaction with the Young Bucks. So I thought the entire thing went fantastic for AEW, and I thought it was a winning weekend on what was a really busy weekend for professional wrestling. So we did have the debut of Jay Lethal. Somebody had the number of people that debuted for AW on pay-per-view over the past year, and it was like eight or ten or some ridiculous number. Oh, yeah, and, Ryan's. you know, the whole Ring of Honor situation occurred, and uh, everybody's deal. You know, the, the gist of the story the day that it occurred was... You know, everybody is free to do whatever they want, but they are still committed for the last Ring of Honor taping and the final battle pay-per-view. That's what was said. That's largely true, but, you know, if you if you want to do something, you talk to Ring of Honor. And what happened was Jay Lethal got his release. He is no longer with Ring of Honor. He is full-time with AEW. He debuts on Wednesday in a match for the TNT title against Sammy Guevara. And he is not the last that will be jumping ship from, from one place to another. But that was the only debut on the show. Although they did announce that this coming Wednesday, we will have another AEW debut based off what happened on the pay-per-view, and that is Tomohiro Ishii, who will be teaming up with Orange Cassidy to face the Butcher and the Blade. And it does very much appear that at some point very soon, Okada is going to be making his debut in AEW. Neither of them obviously have signed. They're still with New Japan. But the, the forbidden door is open, and uh, we got people in this country, and they will be... Coming in.